In today's quick video, we'll look at something that confuses a lot of Affinity users. The difference between pixel layers and image layers. Now this video applies to all the Affinity programs, Affinity Photo, Designer, and Publisher, but I'll mostly be using Affinity Photo today. So perhaps you've run into this problem here. You choose the selection tool here, you select something you want in an image, and then you try to copy and paste it. So I'll press Control C, Control V. I have my new copy over here, but if I drag it out, it's the whole image that was copied. Or maybe you've run into this problem. You select a paintbrush, you go to paint on your image, and then you get this message up here. So what's going on? Well, you're encountering an image layer. Now, how do I know this is an image layer? Well, I can hover over here on this icon. It says image. If I have it selected with the move tool, I can also look here in the top left and I see it says image. With an image layer, Affinity is trying to keep all the original resolution data that was in your image. The benefit of this is that the original resolution of your image is preserved. The downside is that you cannot modify or select individual pixels within your image. To do that, you need a pixel layer. So how do we get a pixel layer? Well, the process of converting something to a pixel layer is called rasterization. So let me show you how to do that. I'll make a copy of this image here. I'll hold Alt and just drag. I'll call picture one my original image. I'll call pixel two my raster. So the way we rasterize an image is we can right click on the layer and we can choose rasterize. So I'll click rasterize. And now I have a pixel layer. If I hover over the icon here, you can see it says pixel. So let's try my copy and paste operation again. I'll select the freehand selection tool. Make sure my raster layer is selected. I'll drag around my character. I'll press control C, control V. And now I actually have a copy of just that selection. Let me delete that. I can also modify the pixels. So I can use something like the smudge tool. So I'll select that. And I can push pixels around. Let me undo this and get my original image back here. I'll control Z. So let me give you a warning about rasterization. When you rasterize an image, it will rasterize at the current size of that image. So let me give you a very extreme example here. I'll make this very small. Let's make it like that. You can see it's super tiny. I'll select it in my layer stack. I'll right click and I'll say rasterize. Now if I zoom it back up, you can see the resolution is very bad. That's because when we rasterized, it just took how the image looked at that small size. So I recommend making the image 100% of its original size and then rasterizing. So let me undo this. I can take my image here, set the size to 100%, then I can rasterize it, and I keep my original data, and I can go back and I can move it as I see fit. Let's look at the benefit that image layers have of keeping their original data. I've created this ridiculously small affinity photo document. You can see the size here, it's 200 by 100 pixels. I'm going to place this image in the document. So you can see this is a very high quality image. Here in this document, let me place it in there. I'll select File, Place, and I'll choose my Dinosaur PNG. I'll place it. Now if I zoom out, you can see how big this actually is. It's quite big compared to my document. I'm going to resize it so it fits on the document. So there it is. Affinity Photo shows us the resolution of the document here. That's why our image looks low quality. I'll call this image. Even the text looks bad here at this size. Now I'll copy it and rasterize to a pixel layer. So I'll hold Alt and drag. I'll right click on this one. I'll say rasterize. And I'll give it a title. I'll call it pixel. So right now they look pretty much the same. I'll export my document, file, export. And I'll export it as a PNG at 200 by 100 pixels. So I'll select export. And let's call it low res. So now if I open this file in Affinity Photo, let's open up what we exported. Unsurprisingly, it doesn't look that great. It still looks pixelated and terrible. Now let me go back to my original document here and let's export it at a higher resolution. So I'll say File, Export, and let's make it 20 times bigger. So now we're gonna export it 4,000 by 2,000 pixels. We'll call this High Res, Save. Now let's open up the High Res version. And here you can see the difference. The image size is high resolution and the pixel size is not. This is because even though our image didn't look great in our document, it still had that data there. So later on, when we wanted to make it a bigger size, it could retrieve that data. The pixel layer was just locked into its low res data. So this is one of the benefits of the image layer. So when should you rasterize an image layer into a pixel layer? Well, generally you should avoid it if possible. Let me show you some tricks that might help in avoiding it. I have this image of a mountain range here. Let's say I wanted to paint some clouds on it. So I could select a brush and I would start painting on my layer here. And you can see we get the message about rasterization. So how can we avoid it in this case? Well, let me undo this. 
I'm back to an image layer here. One thing we can do is paint on top of our image. So I'll add a pixel layer here. Now I'm on the layer above my mountains. And now I can actually paint on this layer. And you can see that my mountain layer is still an image. I have a pixel layer above it. And I can toggle that pixel layer on and off. I can smudge it. So if you just want paint on your image, you can actually paint on the layer above it. Another common tool to use is the inpainting brush tool. So that's this tool here, inpainting. And let's say I want to remove my person here. So I'm clicking on them with the image layer selected. I'll let go. And it rasterizes and removes the person. So it had to convert my layer to a pixel layer. But if I undo this, this tool actually has the ability to work across layers. So once again, I can add a new pixel layer. And with my inpainting brush selected, I can click this drop down up here and say current layer and below. So I'll click this. So I'm on my pixel layer here. Let me erase the guy again. And he was able to be removed without rasterizing. That's because the change is actually on this pixel layer up here. If I turn off my bottom layer, this is the content that it added. And if I hide that pixel layer, you can see my original image is still there. So if you're using a destructive tool, see if it has that ability to work across layers. Additionally, there are many filters up here that will rasterize your image. So I can click blur, Gaussian blur, and you can see it rasterized my image. But I can undo this. And in this case, many of those filters up there are available as live filters down here. So I'll click these. And these are non-destructive filters. So I'll select Gaussian blur, and I can blur it as much as I want and it still stays as an image. Now, unfortunately, not all these filters are available as live filters, but you can check to see if the one you wanna use is listed here and use that instead. Now, sometimes it is unavoidable to rasterize an image. For example, the smudge brush tool, let me select that again. I'll click this. It doesn't have that ability to work across layers. So I will have to convert this to a pixel layer if I want to smudge it. In a situation like this, I recommend duplicating your layer. So I'll right click, I'll say duplicate, now I have two. I can call this bottom one original. Then I can go to the top one and I can smudge that. And you can see it rasterized that top layer. But later on, if we need to reference our original image, it's still available down here. Do you still have any questions about image versus pixel layers? Let me know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.